Welcome to the Politics of Everything. I'm Amber Danes, your host and podcast producer. This is a half hour of power, a podcast dropping every week where I unpack the politics of everything, from money to motherhood, nutrition to narcissism, startups to secularism, the environment, equality, and much, much more. Our guests are seasoned in the field or topic of their choice, even if you've not heard of them yet. This is a non-partisan show. So while I love exploring varied views and get a buzz from a healthy debate of ideas, this is not a purely blue, white, green program. Please subscribe, tune in and enjoy the politics of everything. Tracy Gillies is a specialised holistic health coach, energy healer, soul realignment practitioner and negative energy removal expert. Her profile captured my eye over the summer and I emailed her to find out more about who she is and what she does and this is our chance to have that conversation. Tracy says that she's developed these very specialised skills during her own life struggles when she was seeking holistic ways to heal herself from a range of conditions such as postnatal depression, Epstein-Barr glandular fever, adrenaline fatigue and anxiety, all things that many of us will relate to. It is through her own healing journey and spiritual awakening that she's developed a range of skills that enable Tracy to access a person's psychological, neurological and spiritual frameworks. And through this, she can help someone with their mind, body and soul at the deepest of levels. So here we are to delve into the politics of healing. Welcome to the show, Tracy. Hi, thank you for having me, Amber. So many things that we could cover, but I'd love to just start, um, if you wouldn't mind, with where you started. Did you have a career in profession that was prior to where you're at now? And what was that and what did that teach you? Oh, I've done lots of different things. I used to work in management. Um, I worked for in the mobile phone industry for years. I've done lots of different things, Amber, but to be honest, I've always done things that I didn't really love. I was very good at just doing what I thought I should do. So to be honest, I don't know, you know, and what did I learn from it? Wow, I learned that now I do what I love and following your passion and purpose is so much more rewarding. So it's kind of the opposite to what did I did I learn from it? Interesting. So yeah, lots of people have, I guess, a slower start to maybe find their thing. You know, I think a lot of people assume when you leave school at 18, you're just going to, you know, go off and find your niche and stay in that forever but a lot of people like yourself have had multiple careers and experiences before they find what they should be doing um, Mm -hmm. with their lives so you've obviously arrived at this area of healing and it's such a broad topic but so many people need some form of it whether it be for their general health mental well-being emotional healing you know the list goes on what made you focus on this particular area I was really broken myself and I was, after having three children, um, my husband worked away a lot. I actually was quite unwell and to be honest, like just after I had my third child, I just about, I pretty much did have like a mental breakdown and I would be going, what's wrong with me? And the doctors would say they wanted me to go on medication and said I was clinically depressed And I just knew in my heart of hearts that there was really more going on, you know, also went in line with my cycle, I'd sort of be up and then I'd be down and all of these things. And um, I guess for me, it was the path to healing myself that led me into then learning these things. So once then I healed myself, I, I sort of wanted to go on and help other people. So you've had the personal experience, which I think is a great place to start, particularly if you're going to help others. How did you actually formally train in this space? I mean, do you have experiences, obviously, that you've shared, but some qualifications that back up sure. what you do and how how can you actually get into the space of healing? Because it seems something that's not a formal career, it wouldn't be something your careers advisor with school would, would recommend that, you know, you go and study. How do you go about becoming qualified, particularly to help others? Well, I did always have a love for natural therapies and I was always trying to go and try different things. But really the key to what I did study is when I realized I really needed to fix myself and I needed help, I ended up finding a lady that did kinesiology, but she did a lot of other energy work. And within three to four months, my life had changed a lot. And then she said to me, you know, you need to start thinking about doing something for yourself. And so I said to her, I want to do what you're doing. And I was really, really lucky because where I trained and the person that I studied under was pretty much 15 minutes from where I lived. And 
Australia and also New Zealand, but mainly Australia for kinesiology is actually one of like the most advanced places in the world for that natural therapy. And so I went on to do a diploma in that. It was, I think it was, it was two years, but it was really like a three-year diploma put into two years. Um, and then after that, it just opened my eyes to energy healing and a whole different world. And then I really went on to do a whole lot of different things from that. Absolutely. That's interesting. So how did you go about finding, I guess, the best course for you? Was there a process of research at your end or did you, you know, just know that this was the place that you wanted to study? I mean, how do you go about that? Because I guess there'd be people out there thinking, well, yes, it's a qualification, but, you know, there's a lot of, it's a lot of, a lot of opportunities for organisations and, and educational facilities to kind of take advantage of people's desire to be in this space. So it's interesting to know how you actually found the course. How sort of research did you have to do before you went, this is the course for me? It was through the lady that had studied there. Okay, so you knew someone who had the experience. Well, it was yeah. through the therapist that I was seeing at the time. So I knew, and then I went along to like an information night and found out more about it. And I just thought, yeah, this sounds great. And I, I just really started on that path. I don't think I really thought where it was really going to lead to. I was really also just looking maybe to heal myself more as well to start with. Interesting. So what is the best way for someone to heal from, say, a traumatic experience um, so that they can perhaps not move on? Because I think that's often, you know, a term which we use in, in, in the Western society, you know, just move on, get on with it, um, put your big girl pants on and keep going, which I think is often the problem for lots of people. But how do you heal from that and then sort of allow yourself to have a different life where this experience might not define your future? I just think it's about really going to those deep places within ourselves and working through whatever these traumatic situations or emotions or all of these different things from our past. Because I don't think a lot of people understand that all of these things really create these restrictions within our energy. And, you know, even these underlying things that we have, we can kind of create these beliefs about ourselves and the way we view the world. And it can all be based through this trauma. And then we almost go and recreate our future from this place. So again, as I said before, there are lots of different therapies, but it's really about that sort of self-discovery, you know, looking at emotions, really kind of going into those deep places and I guess committing to work through those experiences or that trauma so we can release it for ourselves. It sounds like it would be, you know, obviously quite painful for some people and, and a process which not everyone's going to be open to. Do you, do you find that you've, you, you've got to be in the right mindset to be able to even start this process to be honest it depends on the therapy because the therapies that I work with are really beautiful give us an example I'd love to know more about that so when you gave the introduction before about what I did I I actually am able to access somebody's it's physiological so their actual physical body their neurological so at the level of their mind and then their spiritual frameworks but at this level within ourselves it, it's something called our innate intelligence or there's many names for it but it, it's basically like this amazing wisdom that knows exactly what we need to be in optimal physical mental emotional and spiritual health so if you tap into these places within yourself I don't know I don't want to say that it's it's different it's not like you have to rehash the past or really you know experience it all again there's techniques that you can do to almost find the trauma or the emotion or the story and release it without having to go through so much more pain it can be hard to talk about it because there's lots of different therapies and some people will really go into that deep pain to release things so of it course. really depends what therapy that you're actually looking at but you know if we trust in ourselves and the process and these sort of higher aspects if we're willing to maybe step into it there's so much resolve and and we kind of can find that support we need it doesn't have to be that painful so I'm probably comparing it to say when you go and see sometimes a traditional psychologist and they, they spend a lot of time going into your background which can be fine but for some people that's really triggering and they just don't have that desire to sort of you know relive a trauma and have to discuss it to actually move forward oh yeah sure um, so what I do is very different to sort of that talk therapy. I realise talk therapy and that does have its place, but I guess... Absolutely, I what, agree. But. So 
I, I guess I would say I do energy healing, but in saying that everything is energy. So I actually do help people to heal their physical by being able to access their energy at this higher level, release any blocks and restrictions, and then areas where they were chronically stuck or even their physical body wasn't able to heal. Like when our energy is balanced and in alignment, we have this most amazing ability to self-heal if we're given the right support. So we have this ability within us, but yes, there is ways that we can almost enhance it or tap back into it or, you know, release those, those things that are actually holding us back. So talking a little bit more about how you work with people, I guess in the land of COVID, we've all got very used to sort of teleconsults and Zooms and obviously not being face to face, but do you generally work with people in person or remotely and what sort of is that kind of process and is there a time frame for some of the therapists? Can you give us an example? Oh, so I work remotely. I actually work through something called energetic surrogacy. So I'm able to access a person's energy at a much higher level um, and I actually bring their energy into my body and I work through myself as if it's almost like I'm a clear channel. And again, I'm able to access their physiological, neurological and spiritual frameworks and by releasing any restrictions, then they're able to heal. But I do it quite differently. So I work with people for around about six months because there's quite a few things that I actually specialize in. So I specialize in helping people to heal and recover from Epstein-Barr virus. Um, That's a real key one because, again, in order to heal, you have to find the true underlying cause to a health issue. And Epstein-Barr now is actually being linked to a lot of um, mystery illnesses, chronic fatigue, even cancers, all of these different things. And 95% of the world's population will actually have it, but many will not even realize that it's there. And it causes a lot of disconnection. It can kind of lay dormant for years, even like decades. And then it really affects a person when they're going through a lot of other stress and their body's dealing with other things. So even like thyroid dysfunction, the tr- uh, most of the time the true underlying cause is Epstein-Barr virus. So there's a number of things. I have a lot of people that come to me for adrenal issues or thyroid or their physical health. They're very common in our modern society, aren't they? You know, I've, I've had adrenal fatigue in, in the past just from burnout, really. It would be corporate burnout would be the term that, you know, I'd be more familiar with, but it was diagnosed. And it, it's it's all, all encompassing and it can really make you feel depressed and, you know, that you're not going to move move past this. But um, it's good to that there's a process that people can go through and, and actually know that there's, you know, a life on the other side that's positive and healed. Sure, but there's things that people can do that I guess maybe I want to speak about that because I'm really passionate about people not really understanding how their body works. And this is almost the path that took me to the place of breakdown because I didn't understand. And if I had have had these little bits of information, I probably could have helped myself a lot more. And um, one of the big things that I would help people with is what actually happens is when we're holding a lot of stress at the level of our mind, so even overthinking and worry, and if you think about this modern world, we're all so busy, there's all so many demands all the time. And what happens is when we're constantly in this state, it actually pushes our body into a deep state of stress too. So our adrenals will overproduce cortisol, which does a lot of damage. But what actually happens is we get stuck in it. So it's actually a name called sympathetic nervous system dominance. And it actually means then we lose our ability to access our parasympathetic nervous system, which is the place that we heal and repair in. So that's the same thing about saying, well, why does disease still exist? Because everything in our body will repair within a certain time frame. But it's because of this state that we get stuck in that we essentially lose that ability to heal ourselves. And so I kind of wish I had known this because I could have looked at my mental processes or how much I was kind of stressed in my life and even taking you know, time for myself or calming my mind could have, if I had a realized, had a bigger impact on my overall health and well-being. And I, I don't think people understand that. And we've become the society that I used to wear it like a badge of honor that I was so busy all the time. I'm so stressed. I'm so busy. I've got so much on. And society just can't, or we can't keep functioning like this and expecting that our health remains in health. Absolutely. No, I think that that's great. 
insight and because you've had the experience, something that other people I'm, not, I'm sure can relate to. So you have developed an emotional transformation framework. And when I connected with you on LinkedIn, you sent me a copy and it, it's great. It's been, it's been really awesome just to get familiar with that. But for everyone else out there who hasn't had that experience yet, what is it about in a nutshell and how can it help people who are seeking healing in their everyday lives? Well, Emotions are just energy in motion and they're almost like messengers calling us into action. So even something like anxiety or overwhelm, it, there's something that it's trying to tell us. And so, you know, often I do have people say to me, I want to be more spiritually connected because I do a lot of really high soul work for people. And I say to them, are you listening to your body? And they say, what? And I say, all these emotions, all of these things that are going on, you know, they're, they're ways for us to then hear what our body or what these higher aspects want us to hear. And so we can then do a lot of transformation in our life by if we're willing to sort of look at our emotions. The same as before, you said, well, how could somebody work through their traumatic past? Well, you know, we can look at our emotions and start from there. And often the emotion that we're feeling, it's not really the true story. So if we're willing to hear what's really underneath it, because often we suppress things or, you know, we don't want to kind of go deeper or look at it might be a bit hard. But if we're willing to do that, then we're able to release things for ourselves. And in turn, you know, like blocked emotions and stored emotion, that's another big thing for ill health as well. And so this framework allows people to go into their emotions. It's a work through framework that then you sort of tap into it, um, how to reconnect with those higher aspects. And then there's also sort of like a release in it as well. That's really interesting. How long did that take you to develop? Is that something that's been a work in progress for a while? Yes, probably because it kind of is a mix match of a number of different therapies. So it then was just, yeah, looking at how I really, how I can help people to be able to manage their own energy better. Like I do this healing work and I love what I do, but you know, there's some therapists that want people coming back and coming back to them. And I really want to empower people that, you know, I give them back that platform in their body that they can then continue to heal in themselves, but also teach them how to access their energy, how to tune into themselves, how to be more connected and giving them tools that they can work through things because life is always going to happen. We're always going to have situations and things come up. So if we're able to work through things within ourselves, it just, it's much easier. Sounds life-changing. So I, I yes, I definitely recommend having having a look at that because I found it very fascinating and, and very oh, purposeful for me as well. To get a bit more personal, how would you describe sort of your favourite book or film or, you know, anything that kind of you keep coming back to and what would you choose and why? And I'd ask this question because I think it's fascinating to see what people are attracted to in terms of their cultural kind of sensitivities, but also just to see where their inspiration perhaps comes from. And it might not even be professional. It might be something personal and nonfiction. Okay. I would have to say there's a movie that I absolutely love. It's probably not what you think I'm going to say. And so it's the movie of Titanic. That is actually my favourite movie. Yes. And um, I recently... Sh must, must be the soundtrack you're addicted to. I'm joking. <laughs> Oh, I just, I just, I love, I, and you know what, I love anything to do with kind of history, even like Vikings, even mystical, all of these different things, but I love that story, and I think, you know, there's a beautiful love story in it, there's that kind of adversity and people overcoming challenge, and good. I, I don't know, I just am really drawn to it, in fact, I got my kids to watch it the other day, and they actually really loved it too. I do like anything that I have a bit of a cry at to, to be honest, if there's that emotional release without kind of having to hold on to the pain. Fantastic. I love it. I, you did surprise me too, so I always <laughs> love being surprised and intrigued. I know because I do read a lot of books around healing and, you know, I have all this information I love, but sometimes I just like that I don't have to think about anything and, you know, just to kind of zone out. But, yes, I do like that movie. Fantastic. Who have been some special mentors, maybe one or two people in your life, and they can be in your professional world and also in your personal, and what have they taught you about life and success and maybe where we're at right now? Um, I would say through my training, the man that I did the, the study through, Guy Bennett, he was an amazing, amazing man. He actually had developed a lot of the course content himself and really had advanced kinesiology in Australia and you know 
I guess it wasn't the fact of going to learn, like it's not just the fact of going to learn this healing modality, you actually have to heal yourself first. So it wasn't the fact of me just going to learn it. I had to almost go through all of this healing before I could really step into that role of being a healer. Like I often say that, you know, you can't heal anyone else until you've healed yourself. And he was wonderful because he held that space. He was very knowledgeable, but had a lot of compassion and just that role to help people go through, you know, their own healing journey, but at the same time teaching them how to heal others. So he would have been, and then I had another lady that really helped me with my own healing journey as well that was a big mentor. But they all of them sort of came later in my life. Excellent. I love that. I love the fact that it all ties in together. One final takeaway, what would you say the best way to summarise the politics of healing is? It could be a tip or a sentence or two that really summarises what you think people should ruminate on as we leave this conversation today. I think we all have to take responsibility for our own healing Um, and also what we're creating for ourselves. But one big thing I do teach with all of my clients is I teach less is more. I think we've just gotten so overrun with all these demands like I was talking about before and our life gets so busy and I think we have to create that space for ourselves so that we can, you know, find that space and that quiet space and that's the space that healing really comes from. That's really good advice and a great place for us to end this chat today. If you want to connect further with Tracy Gillies, I will have some details on my show notes of how to connect with her further. It's been great to have this conversation and I hope you all take some notes and move along in your healing journey as well. I'm Amber Danes and this is The Politics of Everything. Thank you for listening. Thanks so much for listening today. If you've enjoyed The Politics of Everything, I thrive on your feedback. So please add a short review and share the podcast with your network through Apple, Spotify, and all the usual suspects. I'm always on the hunt for new and diverse guests. So if you or someone you know has a fresh idea you're busting to get out there, please email me at amber at amberdanes.com and my crew will get back to you very soon.